Well, it's good to be with you all. Um, Carolyn asked me to speak about being born original. I should tell you that I spent, I'm a teacher here at Aquinas High School in Augusta. It's the Catholic, it's our diocesan high school. Um, and so every year I spend uh, 180 days teaching at least five classes a day, what it means that they are born original. So I will try to be as brief as I can. It's, it's, not, um, it's not that easy of a subject to teach, but it's easy to sort of understand, okay? And so I teach this idea that we are born original as if we're on a hero's journey. Each of us, each of us are created in the image and likeness of God. We are a hero. Now, of course, Christ is the hero who saved us all. He's an incredibly important uh, guide for us and partner in this journey. But there's something about us that's central to our journey. We really are on a hero's journey, each of us. And why do I say that? Well, often hero journeys begin with an impulse. Something moves us. And for us, that hero's journey begins with the reception of a love letter. A love letter. And it comes down to us, every person who's ever lived for the last 25, 2500 years in some capacity have received a variant of this love letter. It's the Bible. The Bible. The Bible is a 73 book love letter. It was written by God over many centuries to us to tell us something about him and about us, about ourselves, who we are in our relationship to him. And I know this book is a love letter. See, some of you are saying right now, I've never heard that the Bible is a love letter. But the principal message of that whole entire 73 book love letter is, I love you. I love you. And you are magnificent. That's the principal message of everything. And so I could say this because all we have to do really is look at the first chapter of Genesis. The first chapter of the first book. It talks about God creating the universe, the entire world. And it starts with an understanding that he created everything from nothing. And so you ask yourself, well, why did he create at all? Why did he create anything? Why, why would he do that? And some of my students here will say, well, he was lonely or he wanted slaves to work his creation. But when we really think about it, and it actually says this in that chapter, God says in this, let us create him, let us create them in our image and our likeness. Let us. We, of course, understand that to be the Trinity. And you can look further in the Bible at John, the beginning of John, and you'll see that the word was with God and the word was God. So God wasn't alone. So he didn't create out of loneliness. And so little was he alone because he's love. So God was existing in perfect love before there was anything. And this love letter tells us this. To tell us you weren't created because I needed you. No, you were created out of no thing, out of nothing, out of me, who is love. All of creation came from God who is love. He created from nothing. Everything comes from love. He created for love. For us to experience his love. That was the whole purpose of his creation. And in fact, he goes one step further in this great first chapter of Genesis. Verse 26 and 27. He says, not only did I create everything good and everything like me, everything from love. But let us make them, human beings, in my, our image and our likeness. Well, if God is love and we are created like him then we are in the image and likeness of love. We receive this love letter from love, writing to us who are in the image and likeness of love for the purpose of loving. And how do I know that? Because that beautiful story climaxes on the sixth day with us at the peak. And he says, take care of my creation. Everything I created out of love, I want you all to love. I want you all to love. And that's the beginning of our journey, accepting this real truth about who we are. If we're created by a God who is love, and we are love, we are absolutely magnificent. What else could we be? We literally could be nothing else. But that can be hard for some of us to accept. 
because we look around and we don't meet certain standards or we don't feel good about ourselves. But what we're really not seeing then is God, how he created everything to be good. So all the diversity, all the difference that we see, if it came from God and God is love, it is love too. And so there's this radical beginning for all of us. God who is love created everything from love for the purpose of experiencing love and loving others. Of course, there's that moment that comes just two short chapters later, right? The two short chapters later when these two people, the beginnings of all humanity, human nature, we have everything they, that they could ever want, except one thing, right? And for whatever reason, they choose that one thing that they didn't have that they could never actually have. And so they fall. And that is also, again, really the move, I think, into the true hero's journey. Because God has given us this love letter. He said, you're not perfect, you've fallen. Although you are love and I love you, you are made original. Now come back to me. Come back to me. And so here the hero's journey begins. We believe that the love letter was really written for us. We have it. Here's mine right here. We have it, we know what it is, it's come to us, we read it, and we're gonna go find the author. We're gonna go find the author. But we don't have to just walk on our own or by ourselves, no. The Old Testament is full of prophets. God sends guides to us. God sends tons and tons of guides to us along the way. Teachers, friends, parents, people who love us, some weird guy we met on a park bench who we happen to have a conversation with. Some really awesome old lady who gives us the greatest piece of advice in an ice cream store. They're all God's prophets. They all speak the word of God. And they lead us on this journey. On this journey. And each and every one of them, if we really listen, will tell us the secret of life. Do we all know what that is? It's love. It's love. And they will love us and we will love them and we will continue on our journey. And when the journey gets really, really difficult and as it did for the ancient Israelites, well, God gave us the Messiah. He gave us himself. And so once he came and once he showed us that incredible act of love, that's what that act is on the cross, right? You could talk about all the theology, the theology of atonement, all this other types of theology. But the truth of the matter is the act was an incredible act of love. God says, look, if I have to die to show you how much I love you, I will. And he does. And the Father, God the Father says, you know what? We're going to use this act to bring them back to heaven. And there's the atonement. The gates open. And the journey continues. It doesn't stop there. The journey continues. We are fundamentally changed by this incredible act of love. We are restored to the love we were created to be by this great act of love. And so as the journey continues on our way to God, he gives us the sacraments along the way. I think of it like breadcrumbs. Grace is like breadcrumbs. You know, you need a bite to eat and there's some cookies along the way. You know, I was really having a bad day and I needed to go see the priest and I told him what I did and I didn't really encounter the priest, actually. He was sitting there, but really I met Jesus, and he gave me grace. He strengthened me again for my journey. The Eucharist, every day if I wanted, strengthened for the journey. Grace, leading back to him, back to him, and back to him. And we have to make choices because it's our hero's journey. We're going to have struggles. So we're going to have things we need to overcome, and so some days the guides won't be there. But every good hero's journey has all these challenges. We all read these books, haven't we? We all know the stories. You're going to have to make choices because we need to be responsible for our own journeys. We do. And so sometimes our desires will be good, sometimes they won't. But when they are good and they are filled with love, that's the journey, the next step forward. So for you young people right now, you have to really start to ask yourself, what is it I really desire? 
Some people are afraid to ask that question. Some Catholics are afraid to ask that question. What does I want? Well, God created us for love, to desire things, to want to be with people, and to want to do things. And our journey, this hero's journey, this vocation, isn't going to be very uh, fulfilling if we're not doing something we want to do. So here we go to God with ourselves. Lord, what is it you want me to do? What is it you want me to do? And I can honestly tell you in my own life, the choices I've made, because I've asked that question before, have been incredibly rewarding. Have been incredibly rewarding. Um, and even sometimes when the decisions have been made for me and I wasn't so sure of them, like leaving an incredibly good parish ministry in South Columbus to come and teach high school at Aquinas High School, turns out there's nowhere else in the world I'd rather be than teaching these young people during this pandemic. Nowhere. Why? Because I've recognized that God sometimes works, sends guides into my life that I might not want to listen to, but in this case, Bishop Hartmeyer, the guide, told me where to go. And you know what? He was exactly right. I've been here three years, and I'm much closer to Jesus, and so much closer to my true self than I was the day I stepped in this building. The journey never ends. It never ends. Until you're ultimately with God. We have to accept the fact that we received a love letter, and that love letter tells us who God is and who we are. And I... I want you to understand this real fact. You are magnificent. We are all magnificent. We are created in the image and likeness of God who is love, therefore we are love. Is there anything more magnificent and beautiful than love? Is there real, true, pure love? Is there anything more magnificent? Through those great acts of love, all the best things in history, including redemption and creation, have happened. And we have the power of God in us, grace. So along our journeys, we can help who we need to help. And this is where the uniqueness comes in. This is where the uniqueness comes in. You see, you can say, okay, we're created in love, so we're all love, we're all kind of alike. But there's no way to do that. Because your journey your journey, your journey, your hero's journeys is going to be totally different than mine. Totally different. God is going to call you to love different people than I will ever love in a different way than I could ever love them. Your unique person in that moment called to love is exactly what the world needs. So your experiences with your families, with your friends, the diversity that you've lived through, the different schools you've gone to, the different colleges you might go to, the different jobs you might do, the different places you travel to, the different books you read, all of that will come into being you. And in that moment, you will be the exact person God wants there to love. Step after step after step on that journey. It starts, though, with, begin, with believing that this is a love letter, not a book of rules. It's not a book of rules. It's a love letter. And every act in there is him telling us he loves us. Our journey back to him is us writing our love letter back to him. And you will uniquely be called to love uniquely. You will be uniquely called to love uniquely. I can't do it for you. I can't. In fact, I can't even tell you how to do it, just that you should. Just that you should. But I'll tell you this much about your journey. If you do accept it, it will be really challenging. And you know what will be really hard? What I have found most difficult about it? Is that the more you choose to love, the more opportunities God gives you to love. And all of a sudden, your schedule is full of people who need to be loved by you. But every night when I go home and I say thank you for my day, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good about the day. And so I think my journey's going the right direction. 
So I pray that you, each and every one of you, accept your invitation to love. Accept the fact that you are magnificent, that you were created for love, that God is going to give you everything you need to love, and that you love in your own unique ways. And I promise you when you do, your life will be the life you want. Your life will be the life you want.